Okay. Yeah. You want to know what I have? Yeah. For you please today. tell me. You guys know that my V Day app, I had to bring something crazy to the oh, table. No. So it's like this government conspiracy of some sort, but I don't really know what to categorize this segment, which means that it's really fucking crazy. <laughs> I'm so excited. Okay, so today I'm going to be talking about a man named Kyle Odom. Kyle was born and raised in northern Idaho, and he lived a relatively normal life. He had a normal and loving family and friends, and he was super intelligent. Hmm. He finished high school, and he went on to join the Marine Corps, and... After the Marine Corps, he really liked the science field, so he decided that he would go to the University of Idaho in fall of 2010 to study biochemistry, Mm. which is very tough, Very. where he finished with a degree and a great GPA and graduated magna cum laude. Is that how you say that? Yeah. I don't know why I didn't graduate that. (laughs) Couldn't tell you because we didn't do it. Couldn't tell you because we cheated. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) He, during college, he won numerous awards. He was on an academic scholarship. And I, when I tell you this man is an intelligent person, he is very freaking intelligent. After college, he applied to some grad schools and he got an offer to get his PhD at the Baylor College of Medicine in Human Genetics. Oh, my God. An offer to like come study. Yeah, here. that's insane. Um, fast forward to 2016 when I'm jumping way far ahead and I'll go back. Um, In 2016, when Kyle Odom was thrown behind bars after being arrested on the attempt to murder a local pastor. Oh, shit. Say what? Say why? The answer is pretty simple. Kyle Odom shot pastor Tim Remington because, well, Tim Remington was a hypersexual and aggressive Martian that was here on Earth and running the world without us knowing. Oh, was he? He was. And how does Pastor Tim play into this? Because he was one of these aliens. Yeah. He was the alien. Okay? He was that one. He came down here to be a pastor and share the exactly. Lord's good word. Luckily for us, Kyle released his own manifesto, explaining everything from the beginning. So let's back it up and fill in the gap. <laughs> the man's behind bars right now, though. Yep. But it started when Kyle was an undergrad at the University of Idaho. It was his final semester, and as all seniors can understand, his workload was tough. God, his yeah. classes were intense, and he was stress to the max in order to manage his stress he needed a way to cope and this is when he turned to meditation okay. he studied meditation any second that he had to himself and this led to like a quick obsession with trying to understand human consciousness and how they can like affect it and alter it oh. um, Kyle had understood meditation so well that he was reaching extreme states of consciousness oh shit like like he, the Virginia Institute yeah yeah what's it called the Travi? Travis stock? No. I don't remember. Um, one night in February 2014, Kyle was laying in bed meditating when he started to astral project out of his physical body. Oh, shit. He described this experience as the most profound experience he has ever had in his life. During this astral projection, he left his room and entered this completely dark and black space where he had no awareness of physical boundaries. He said that it was the most peaceful he has ever felt. God, I would love to do that. He then began to see a blue light that was coming towards him. But as it got closer, Kyle realized that it wasn't a light at all and that he was in the presence of another being. Oh, no. And then this being yells, you shouldn't be here. Oh, okay. And Kyle's peaceful astral projection was quickly filled with feelings of guilt and wrongdoing. Like, oh, shit, what did I just do? So he started kind of backing away from this being, but then got the feeling that this being maybe had changed their mind about Kyle. Because as quickly as his feelings of guilt came over him, came feelings of unconditional love. Okay. Very weird. Yeah, that's a quick switch up. He then goes on to say that their minds became connected, and this is when he realized that this being was a female. Kyle then became filled with the most euphoric, comforting, and blissful feelings that he has ever felt. And then he woke up. And he woke up crying and he woke up and couldn't move. He couldn't remove himself from the position he was in. Kyle had just had the most blissful experience, but couldn't shake the feeling that he had just lost someone close to him, that he knew that being. Oh, shit. And he knew that being for a long time. And this lasted for a few minutes until the experience left his mind. And Kyle then continued about his day studying for his classes. After this experience, he was unable to meditate ever again. But it changed him in an intelligent way. Oh, shit. Like he had tapped into some type of power. Classes that had him ready to pull out his own hair were a breeze. 
the classes that were so intense and stressful just days ago, Kyle wasn't even having to exert like any type of mental effort. Oh my God. Like he was just flying through. He understood everything. Um, a month later, he started applying to grad schools and was quickly getting interview callbacks and offers were flowing in. And this is when he accepted the position to Baylor College of Medicine, where he'd get his PhD in human genetics. Baylor College of Medicine was a prestigious university and an incredible opportunity. Yeah. He graduated his undergrad and he moved to Houston, Texas, where his life would then change forever. The moment he arrived, he saw flaws in every professor's research. Oh, shit. He felt like his mind was so expanded that he was able to instantly understand entire research projects that would take months and years to comprehend. Oh, my God. Because he was, you know, Mr. Smarty Pants, he wasn't really motivated because he wasn't learning. Right. And he knew everything that he needed to know. Yeah. I mean, you don't want to listen to someone mansplain shit to you when you already know it. Right. So he started to, like, really focus on the flaws of each project and the flaws in genetics. And then he became obsessed with this. And he would go and he'd talk to the professors, but, you know, no one really seemed to care about the flaws which is what he was super passionate about. So he got kind of pissed and decided, you know what? This isn't the place for me. This wasn't for me. Okay. So Kyle left the program. The day after he decided to leave, strange things started to happen. He was mentally exhausted and he was trying to figure out what he wanted to do with his life, but he could hardly think. So eventually he left Texas and started to apply for jobs all over the country. In spring of 2015, he got an interview with a food company. He thought that he was finally about to get his life back together, but the night before his interview, he couldn't sleep at all. He stayed awake the entire night, and this is something that had never happened to him before. You know how hard it is to stay awake all night? Yeah, that sounds awful. Like, but like, really, though, like, you can have like a stressful day, and like, oh my God, I can't sleep, but you always end up falling asleep. Yeah, you always fall asleep. Kyle couldn't sleep at all. The next morning, he looked at himself in the mirror, and he didn't even recognize who was looking back at him. And worse, he said he he felt like his mind had snapped. Oh, shit. He got to his interview, and with his mental state, it didn't go too hot. He was unable to think to answer simple questions, and he had a really difficult time trying to make the simplest of conversations. As soon as the interview was over, he felt totally fine, and he looked perfectly normal. And he slept great that night. The next day, he had a plane ride scheduled back to Idaho to visit home, and his plane ride was very unusual. The seat that was on his ticket was taken, and when he spoke to a flight attendant, she was basically like, okay, and took him to a new seat. Okay. But at this new seat, there was an older man that was in front of him, and this man kept, like, glancing back over and over again. And he wouldn't stop until he got Kyle's attention. And every time he glanced back, Kyle's head began to hurt. Oh, no, no, no. And finally, when Kyle looked back at this man and made eye contact... The man's lips curled up and gave Kyle this evil looking smile. Fuck that. His headache continued for the rest of the flight and got more intense as time went on. And he started to notice that every time he felt pain in his head or got this tingling sensation, that older man would start taking notes in a notepad. Uh. And then about halfway through the flight, somebody else in front of him held up a newspaper and And on that newspaper, in big, bold letters, said, Psychic Reading. And this person held up the newspaper for about five minutes straight. And Kyle said that it was just so blatantly obvious that they were that they were trying to show him this and that they were doing something to him. But he just wasn't sure what was going on. Psychic reading. Yes. In what world is that a psychic reading? Right. And this person's holding up a sign for five minutes? Right. Like this giant newspaper. I mean, like, I think, where is the flight marshal or whatever it is that, right? What that monitors that shit? Yeah. I'm like, who the fuck is on this plane? Yeah. I don't know. He was confused. And then leaving the plane, the same older man with the creepy smile kept showing him his, like, disposable, like, track phone. You know what I mean? Like a burner. Yes. Like, kind of hinting at him, like, you need to get one of these. So Kyle was definitely creeped out and confused as to what was going on, but he tried to make sense of it because he did apply to several government jobs before this event happened, like before the plane ride. So he thought that maybe it was their way of contacting him. Yeah. So out of curiosity, Kyle goes and buys a disposable burner phone. 
He checked his phone every single day, every hour of the day, just waiting for a text. And a month later, he gets a text message that says, come to church at the altar. And it's from a man named John Padula. Okay. He was like, all right, so this is the government reaching out to me. A church is kind of a strange place to meet, but whatever. Like, I'll go yeah. anyway. I want a job. I need a job. Um, once he got to the church, he went inside, and Kyle said he immediately felt like something was off. It felt really wrong, and he felt like his life was in danger. And it became such an uncomfortable feeling that he left the church before meeting anybody. Oh, God. Two days later, he started receiving text messages on this burner phone um, from a man named Tim Remington. At first, they were just like Bible quotes. But then Kyle started to receive threats. He said Tim was sending him messages talking about, quote, their power. Oh. And Kyle wasn't really sure what power he was talking about. But then he was like, well, maybe these people have the same like mind thing going on that I have right now. Mm -hmm. And that's why they're reaching out to me. But with each text in these Bible verses were hidden threats. And the last text he got from Tim Remington said one word, angels. Oh, he was ignoring them at this point, And he thought nothing of it until that night. Helicopters started swarming around his hi hi house, started swarming around his house all night and into the next day helicopters yes kyle knew he needed to reach out to them so he made an appointment to meet this john padula for coffee the original texter guy after making the appointment something bizarre started happening to him and there's so where where i'm getting this information is from kyle's manifesto this is from kyle himself i guess i should have said that at the beginning um but in the manifesto there's words that are redacted mm -hmm. and there's sections that are redacted which is very interesting because it's a you know, why would they be redacting something why from would a they be basic civilian? If that, you're saying that he's crazy. that Yeah, they dubbed him off as crazy. So why would you be redacting? Anyway. Right. So I kind of have a good idea of what these words were. So I'm going to say what I think they are. Okay. Um, because I think they make the most sense. So anyway, it says that after making this appointment, he received the most unnatural erection that he's ever had. Oh, he said it felt like someone was manually pumping blood into his penis. That sounds like a terrible experience. And all during this erection, this song started playing in his head. And the lyrics to the song were, Sister, sister, he is just a plaything. We want to make him stay up all night. Uh, and Kyle had never heard of a song that had lyrics like this. No. And he had no idea what it meant. So he ignored it. And then the song quit playing in his head. When Kyle tried to go to bed that night, as soon as he lay down, the song started again. Sister, sister, he's just a plaything. We want to make him stay up all night. And Kyle stayed up all night. He got literally zero minutes of sleep that night because of this song playing in his head. Yeah, and fucking blue balls, obviously. Um, every time he'd start to like, yeah, exactly, drift <laughs> off, he was woken up violently to the song playing in his <laughs> that head. That sounds awful. That yeah. sounds like literally like torture. So Kyle had finally given up on sleeping that night. So he got up out of bed. He went downstairs to make some breakfast and he was super relieved because he wasn't hearing the song that he was hearing all night sister, anymore. Sister. Yeah. I don't, do you know it? I mean, in my head, it's got to be like a rock song. Right. But, but the second you said it, I was like, sister Christian. No, that, not that. No. That's not what it is. So he stopped hearing the song when he goes downstairs and then he starts to hear a voice enter his head and it told him. You're going to be uncomfortable, but all you have to do is breathe, be sacrificed like Jesus, and get beheaded. Uh, no, and no. Kyle is like, what the fuck <laughs> like, no, is going I on? Like, who's talking to me through my head? Like, yeah. he's like really starting to lose his sanity at this yeah, point. I would. Um, so he goes into this total panic and has no idea what it means. His heart's racing. He's starting to have a literal mental breakdown. And then a few minutes later, he hears a knock on his door. Oh, no. And he when he goes to open it, there's a man standing there and he says nothing. Just hands Kyle a pamphlet. And on the pamphlet, it says the sacrifice of Jesus, which is what the voice in his head told him five minutes before. Oh, no. Kyle said at this point, his mind was racing. He was losing his sanity. He became completely delirious. He was so confused. He felt like he was constantly going to die. And all he wanted to do was to go see his family again. But at this point, his family had moved out of Idaho into Albuquerque. So Kyle decided to buy a one-way ticket there. Of course, Kyle's plane ride did not 
go smoothly. Yeah, he needs to stay the fuck off planes. He was sat next to this larger man who Kyle said kept telling him telepathically that his plane was going to crash. Oh. And every time he spoke to Kyle telepathically, he would sniff like a dog, like a like every time he talked. What? Okay. Kyle at this point is like, I am losing my fucking mind. <laughs> if I had to hear that, I would There freak. is no way this is real. I'm just going to sit here, mind my business, and stay calm as possible. But him not reacting to this man pissed the guy off. So the guy started touching his leg. <gasps> and the second that he touched Kyle's leg, Kyle said that he could feel him inside of his mind. And that this almost caused Kyle to have a serious breakdown, like about to cause a damn scene on the plane. Yeah. Um, and before he was about to cause a scene, a voice in his head said, calm down. You did a great job. You passed. Go enjoy your family. We have a job waiting for you when you get back. So I'm thinking the whole like we're going to crash the plane thing was a test to Kyle to see how he was going to react to this guy. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Kyle, like it was like foreshadowing. Like Kyle would have been the one to cause the scene and possibly make the plane go down. I would have made the scene immediately. Oh, my God. Me, too. If some Especially, weird guy's touching my leg. Well, if no, if someone keeps sniffing beside me, I'm triggered immediately. And he has these thoughts in his head that he thinks this guy's telepathically talking. I to would him. literally like punch a dude in the face. Exactly. Dude, me, too. The rest of the ride was pretty sub- subtle. Um, Kyle actually had a little bit of peace. And then he got off the plane and he had to go get his bags of baggage claim. Here he noticed an entire group of people that were watching him intensely and sniffing. No, it gets worse. He would later say, like later on, that sniffing was something that these alien people would do. And it was really common. He got his bag. He went outside to see his parents who were picking him up. And he gave them the biggest hugs. And Kyle said it was his last happy moment that he could remember. Okay. Everywhere he went after that, he was followed. When he saw one person, that person would sniff at him to let Kyle know that it was them and that they were there. Kyle said they would also smile and laugh and stick their tongues out at him. Day after day went by and Kyle was being harassed by these people. He was scared that they were going to kill him. So he was like locking himself inside his parents home. Yeah, I would do the same. And they kept telling him that they wanted him to go outside alone. But Kyle was refusing. Then they began to threaten to hurt his family. And Kyle was like, enough is enough. What do you want? Like, I will do whatever you want. Leave my family out of this. Mm -hmm. And all they said to Kyle, and this is all telepathically, was go to church. And Kyle immediately knew what they meant. Like, they knew that Kyle knew that what the church they meant was the altar that he got the original text about months ago. So he told them, "Okay, I will go to the altar when I go back. Um, After he agreed, these people left him alone. They weren't standing outside his house anymore. Um, He went to the airport. He boarded the plane. He had a peaceful flight. He got home and he immediately went to the altar for the very first time. Everyone at the altar was acting very strange to the point where Kyle was like, are these people even human? No. Like, I thought this was the government, but maybe this is more than that. He was freaking out, but he still took a seat and he knew that if he left the church that the harassments would start again. When the church service began, a man came and sat down right next to him. And this is when Kyle started smelling something, a smell that he had never smelt before. It was unrecognizable. And the only thing he could compare it to was like the smell of a lizard in a cage and vinegar mixed together. Gross. Yeah. Um, Nothing crazy happened. And when the service ended, they said, like the pastor says, you can leave now. So Kyle leaves and on his way home, he knows that he is not dealing with the government anymore, but that this is not like this is not the government testing you for a new job. Obviously, right. I, don't, I don't think I would ever believe that. I don't, dude, I don't know. The government's fucking weird. That's true. It's like a crazy job. Like they might be. I mean, you. Um, I don't want to give too much information about this, but like someone that we know that Logan and I know um, that Logan knew for only a year. Uh he got off this person got offered a job with the government and logan had to be interviewed like interrogated for two hours this man in a suit just showed up in his office and was like hey are you logan i need to talk to you about so and so and sat there for two hours drilling logan and you know logan he doesn't do good like that yeah and it was just drilling i would have been sweating bullets i know i had been freaking out um 
I lost my place. Neither of us can ever work for the government because if they come to me about you or you right. about me, we're like, you know what? Just go listen to our podcast and then come back and talk to us. Yeah. <laughs> so Kyle knew this was not for a government job and he knew that whatever he was dealing with was something extraterrestrial, something supernatural. And Kyle started to really freak the fuck out. Yeah. Once leaving the church, he received no further instructions from them and he had a pretty peaceful few weeks. So Kyle began applying for jobs again. Because clearly, he's not getting a government job. No. He then said that they started following him again everywhere he went. And then they started to harass him day and night through his mind. He was hearing voices more often, and he was hallucinating things that he knew he wasn't real. And then they started messing with him again sexually. Both males and females were playing out these sexual fantasies in Kyle's mind. And Kyle was getting random and uncontrollable erections as well as this extreme sexual stimulation. And this continued for weeks and it was intensifying as each day moved forward. At this point, Kyle had one goal and that was to maintain his sanity and try to avoid them. And this worked for a little bit, but eventually he had a huge meltdown. He was at a bakery one day when he was surrounded by a bunch of older men. They were looking at him. They were sniffing at him. And then they started stimulating him sexually. And no. They were speaking very aggressively. They were saying to him, humans are nothing more than a result of a successful genetic experiment. You are a threat to the way these people think, and you can no longer be free in this society. Your life is over. You are nothing but a toy. Your purpose now is to suck. And then this word is redacted. Suck dick? I don't know. Suck what? Suck someone's dick. It was two words. Yeah. Um, they were saying such aggressive things. And before they could even finish talking, Kyle lost his damn mind. He was enraged. He was pissed off. He wanted to be left alone. So he left the store and he tried to calm down, but it only got worse. For the rest of that night, he was continually stimulated sexually and it wouldn't stop until oh the God. point where he was like in a serious pain. He broke down in his own home and it became completely distraught. And then it finally stopped. He knew he couldn't take it anymore, so he filled one of the small charcoal grills, you know I'm talking about, like a portable one, yeah, with lit coals, put that grill in his car, rolled out the windows, reclined his seat, laid there calmly, and fell asleep with the intent to kill himself. He should have died there. There's no reason that he didn't die Yeah. until he was woke up in an extreme panic and his body forcing him to get out of the car. He passed out right outside of his car, and when he woke up and regained his consciousness, he was seriously upset that he, that what he did wasn't successful. I mean, yeah, the only thing he like got he, from that is probably brain damage. Right. He ended up checking himself into the VA, who then sent him straight to a mental ward where he was admitted. And nothing improved for Kyle while he was at the mental institution. The medication was doing nothing for him, and he felt like he was just sitting there surrounded by a bunch of psychotic people, and he was exhausted. He knew that their goal was to make him into a crazy person, and Kyle's goal was he was determined to not let that happen. Yeah. So he started fighting back. He leaves the VA, and in desperation, he heads straight to the altar, and he asks them what they want from him. And their response was, we want you as our sex slave. Keep coming to church. So Kyle did. He went to service after service and eventually found himself becoming pretty close to Pastor Tim Remington. One day they were talking face to face and Pastor Reddington told him that he should really consider becoming a minister. And when they were in mid conversation, Tim Remington, quote, revealed himself to Kyle. And Kyle's still confused on what he saw, but this reveal was only like one to two seconds. And during this reveal, his eyes turned huge and bulging out of his head. They turned a dark green. His iris was a yellow and his pupils were slits. <gasps> He's a reptilian. Two seconds later, his face went back to a human face. Kyle continued to go to the altar service after service, waiting for them to do something, but they always just did nothing except telling him that he needed to submit and he needed to surrender. And Kyle had no fucking idea what that meant. So yeah. he left the church and he never went back again. And they finally gave him some space. There was no harassment for a few weeks and Kyle felt like he was recovering, that he was coming back to his sanity. So he wanted to make one final attempt at a normal life and he wanted to be a pharmacist. So he started taking classes at NIC to finish up some prereqs pre that he needed. And then he also started volunteering at a local pharmacy. Once he got back to school, they followed him. No. 
There were several of them in his class every day. Anytime he was trying to study, they were harassing him telepathically. Anytime he took a test, they were stimulating him. But even with all this going on, Kyle still somehow was able to get all A's in every single class because he had, at this point, learned to live with it. Yeah. But then enough was enough. In his final semester in spring of 2016, the harassment was just too intense. Every time he went to class, they were manipulating his brain until he would go into this blind rage. They would suppress his brain until he was blacking out. They were manipulating his heart rate. They would flood his body with adrenaline over and over again. The females would sexually harass him by stimulating him as well as the males. They were depriving him of sleep. Kyle really just had no strength to continue. So he realized a chance at a normal life was ruined. And he stops pursuing a career in pharmacy. And Kyle was distraught. He was pissed. He just wanted to go back to what it was before he had that astral projection yeah on march 6 2016 he went to the altar and he waited for pastor tim remington to leave the church he then walked up behind him and he shot him (gasps) five times in the back and once in the head pastor remington was rushed to the hospital where he survived being shot six times you're lying to my face kyle immediately went on the run from police and headed right for the white house During this time, he was sending out his manifesto, the one that I just summarized and read to you, to all sorts of news media companies. On March 8th, he was arrested by Secret Service outside of the White House for throwing objects over the fence and into the White House lawn. And he gets arrested by Secret Service. Yeah. These objects were USB drives that was informing the president of what was going on. And then also accusing the president that he knew about it. Oh. And he had also sent a letter to the president. But we. Who's the president at this time? Is this Trump or Obama? Obama. So it's still it's early 2016 before November. In July 2016, Kyle pled guilty to felony aggravated battery with a felony firearm enhancement as part of a plea agreement to keep his sentence no more than 25 years. Today, Kyle is still in prison. At the beginning of his manifesto, he talks about how smart he was before all of this and states that he is 100% sane and 0% crazy. He then starts his manifesto off with a section titled, Why Did He Do It?, where he responded that his life was ruined by an intelligent species of incipient humanoids from Mars, and he wishes that he was joking, but keep reading, and then puts a couple bullet points that I think I need to read real quick. Yeah, you have to read these. God, this is so crazy. Yeah, so why did he do it? And then he, this is where he's talking about all of his Martians. First bullet point, they were here long before we ever existed. Number two, their technology is millions of years more advanced than ours. I've seen them do things that defy all comprehension. Number three, they have a massive breeding stock of humans, which they breed and control from birth. They use these humans to live vicarious lives among us. They appear to be completely normal because they're good at imitating human behavior. Number four, The actual Martians live deep underground here and inside of the moon. Hollow moon theory. Yeah. Number five, they take control of, quote, wild human beings and use them as sex slaves. Don't believe me? Ask President Obama to take a lie detector test on this one. Oh, fuck. Number six, they tried to take me, but they were unable to control my mind. And they've been following me ever since. Number seven, I tried everything to get my life back. I begged, I bargained, and I threatened. Number eight. Everything I tried to do was sabotaged. Number nine, I attempted suicide twice, but they stopped me both times. And number 10, my last resort was to take actions that would bring this to the public's attention. And that's why he did it. And that is the Kyle Odom manifesto. I just want to ask President Obama, former President Obama. What I think is crazy is that it started with an astral projection. Right. And people say when you reach that state of consciousness, like there is really studies on this. Yeah. Your mind becomes open to things that it has never been before. Right. And he was talking about how more intelligent he had already become. And like you can't take credit away from this guy. He was studying biochemistry. He had a degree in biochem. He got offered to work in human genetics at the Baylor College of Medicine. Like he was intelligent. He's very intelligent. And I don't know. Like I don't understand why they were after him though. Or I don't understand why the government put him away. Why didn't they use him? 
They have to be using him. So there's a conspiracy theory about okay, it. Okay, tell me. And the theory is that Kyle was a subject of an ongoing MK Ultra type deal that it's still going on. Oh, shit. Yeah. That makes when so much sense. When he was in the Marine Corps. I completely believe that. I totally forgot about him being a Marine. Yeah. Yeah. God, that's so sad. Yeah. It's a, it's absolutely fucking crazy. And obviously the public has, you know, dubbed him off as just a psychotic person with a, you know, mm-hmm. a mental health issue going on. Um, But I think it's also crazy that he got arrested by the Secret Service for throwing something over the fence. I mean, I get why they would do that, because like, what if it was just like mini bombs or recorders or something like that? Right. I don't think you're allowed to even be near the gate. Like you have to be like nine feet back from it. Yeah. Anywhere you go near it. So but I. God. And how did he get from Idaho to D.C.? How you know how far away Idaho is from D.C.? Yeah. Idaho to D.C. in two days. Idaho to D.C. That's what you just sounded like. In two days with. Being a suspect to a murder. Like, literally, he had to be driving to the speed of light. There was a warrant out for his arrest. No, he had to fly. That's how he had to You're get right. There. He had to fly. And then how did he get on a plane with a warrant? Dude, I don't know. And why is shit redacted? If he's so crazy, why are they redacting stuff from this manifesto? And didn't you say he sent it to, like, news channels? Yes. Why was it redacted? Right. I wonder if like, there's an original copy. Like, this is the only copy. copy that I, can, I could find. I looked. I looked long oh ago. Oh, my God. And why were they, like, stimulating him? Like, to cause pain or, like, to live out? He said it was because to live out, like, their own fantasies, you know? I don't know. Really confusing. Really crazy story. Yeah. Maybe First Mr. off, it's sexual assault. Like, right. straight up. So. Oh, God. That is such a cra- I believe him. I do, too. I know. They're probably, like, you're <laughs> crazy. I straight up believe that shit. Yeah. There's no way. I mean, it, it's not like we're just saying that he was smart. Like, he, like, on paper. Like, on paper. Is smart. Yes. Like, very intelligent. But then I'm like, okay, for you to be that smart, is this what happened to Elon Musk? And, is that his name? Yeah. And, like, Albert Einstein and every other And genius. Steve Jobs and um, yeah, all these huge people like amazon facebook all that shit yeah that has to be i mean the facebook dude literally looks like a lizard (laughs) he does what's his name mark zuckerberg yeah yeah he does look like a lizard uh he does have lizard eyes yeah i don't know is kyle still sitting in prison somewhere yes like for real though like he's actually this is a real story this was his man like this is i want to go visit him me too and interview him Creeps and Crimes interviews Kyle Odom. That would be crazy. That'd be dope. We have to do that. Anyway, it was probably really confusing, but that's the case. I loved it. Thanks so much. (laughs) (laughs) Happy birthday, everybody. Happy birthday, Morgan. Happy birthday, Morgan. (laughs) 